Hello everyone, I'm Paolo. Today we'll get to know three Lab1 tools that are dedicated to the analysis of signals in the time domain. The numerical tool, the plotter, and the software trigger. To see what they can do, we provide the same amplitude modulated signal we used in the Spectrum Analyzer tutorial to the locking amplifier. Here it is in the Spectrum Analyzer. With the Peak Finder tool, we can quickly identify the frequencies of the carrier and of the two sidebands. The multi-frequency often greatly expands the possibilities of the Zurich Instruments locking amplifiers. One of the benefits of this option is the possibility to track multiple frequencies in parallel. So I simply take three demodulators and set one on each of the three peaks. Let's start with the numerical tool. This is what you expect to find on the front panel of traditional lock-ins, except that Zurich Instruments lock-ins have more than one demodulator, so several pairs of displays can be present at the same time. This tool gives you a quick overview of the magnitude of all the signals being measured, and their spread through the graphical indicator below each panel. Right now, the low-pass filter bandwidth for the three demodulators is set to 1 Hz, so each demodulator is only measuring the signal at the frequency it's set to. The result is a stable readout with low spread. The default view of the numerical tab shows the enabled demodulators in polar coordinates, but other presets are available, such as Cartesian coordinates, or even for signals not coming from demodulators at all, such as the auxiliary inputs. The custom preset allows you to go to the node tree located in this tab and select whatever signal you want displayed, alongside the ones already present. The tiles can be easily moved around to fit your preferred structure, and can be removed by clicking on their cross button. The Settings tab allows you to further configure each tile to your needs. If we now increase the bandwidth of the carrier demodulator to also include the sidebands, its numerical displays will show a much larger variance but the reason for it is difficult to figure out with this tool. So we now turn to the plotter. The plotter takes signals such as the one displayed in the numerical tab and plots them as time traces, so their evolution can be analyzed. The trace of the amplitude of the modulator 1 clearly shows a sinusoidal pattern, and if we pause the acquisition and measure the period with the cursors, we see that it corresponds to the 20 Hz modulation signal. By plotting the amplitude from a demodulator with the low-pass filter bandwidth set appropriately, it is possible to display the envelope of the signal. Here an amplitude modulation, and in this other example a more complex envelope. Other uses of the plotter may include, for instance, calibrating or aligning experiments, where a signal needs to be maximized or minimized, following the evolution of an experiment from one or more of the signals it generates, or displaying the frequency from an external source. Just like with its numerical counterpart, the plotter can also display many different data streams beyond the modulator's ones. You can select from different presets in this panel, select various common use ones from this pull-down menu, or go to the Tree tab, where you find the full list of selectable streams, such as auxiliary inputs and outputs, boxcar data and PID data if the options are enabled, but also less common ones, such as the trigger inputs and outputs. The math tools provide convenient extraction of useful values from the selected data streams. For instance, using the area tools you can select a region, say 5 seconds long, with the cursors. And Lab1 provides you with statistics such as the mean value, standard deviation, minimum and maximum of the data stream within that region. To complete the statistical analysis, you can enable the histogram. As an example, let's enable the histogram for the external reference frequency. The length of time displayed can be changed with this pull-down menu to a maximum of 12 hours of continuous recording. Once you have the data on the plot, it is very simple to save it as a vector graphic file with this button, or as a comma-separated value file with this one. These saving options are convenient if you need to record a signal continuously over a long period of time. If, instead, you need to only record the data around specific events, the Software Trigger tool provides a way to automate this task by reacting to a trigger signal you specify. 
the signals that can be recorded by the software trigger are similar to the ones displayed by the plotter, and they are selected in a similar way. Let's have a look at the triggering options. There are several different types of triggers that can be chosen, depending on the trigger signal. Analog signals, such as the modulated data or auxiliary inputs, have four trigger types. Edge to trigger on rising and falling edges. Pulse to trigger on positive and negative pulses. And tracking edge and tracking pulse that are variations of the previous ones to track a slowly drifting signal over time. For TTL signals, you can choose between hardware trigger and digital. The latter provides a way to configure complex multi-bit conditions on the DIO lines. Please refer to the user manual and the tooltips for more information on the various configuration options. For this example, let's choose an edge trigger type. We choose the amplitude of the modulator 1 as the trigger signal. This is also the recorded one. And we choose a positive edge. We can choose the correct level to trigger at by looking at the signal on the plotter. The count field lets you select the number of shots the tool should acquire when in single acquisition mode. Let's choose 4. Moving to the window definition in the horizontal section, I know that the signal I want to acquire has a frequency of 20 Hz, corresponding to a period of 50 milliseconds. So we choose a duration of 100 milliseconds to capture two periods of the amplitude modulation in each shot. We then set the hold off time to a similar value to prevent rearming the trigger before the full shot is acquired and avoid overlapping shots. Finally, let's choose a delay of minus 10 milliseconds to start plotting the signal before the trigger occurs, a condition called pre-trigger. Starting the software trigger in single mode, it acquires four consecutive shots, as we specified. The grey dot turns green every time the triggering occurs. The number of samples in each shot is defined by the sampling rate of the selected data stream. We can do a similar acquisition on the signal with a complex envelope. The recorded traces can be managed and saved in the History sub-tab. As a final example, let's reduce the bandwidth of the modulator 1 in small steps by selecting the bandwidth field and using the down arrow key on the keyboard until only the carrier is measured. We can see in the plotter that now the signal is never going to intercept the trigger level, so if we turn the software trigger on, it will never fire. If we just want a single shot at a specified time, we can simply click on Force to start the trigger manually. Alternatively, we can click on Find and Lab1 will find a suitable level for us. We've seen how these three time domain tools work together to give you different perspectives on the same data. The numerical tab gives you an overview of slow varying signals. The plotter shows you trends and statistical data and the software trigger helps you get the data you want when you want it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.